Hello, welcome. It is so good to see you here. My name is Karen Zink and I help people struggling with their health and wellness like I am um, and like a lot of people out there wade through all of the information that's out there um, and find some things that they can implement in their own lives and that of their families to um, help them along on their health and wellness journey and help them live their best lives. So I'm so glad you joined me here today. Um, I want to let you know, first of all, that um, this recording will be part of, this is episode three, and it will be part of my blog series on my website, www.karen, K-A-R-E-N-C, Zinc, Z-I-N-K, Dot com and go check it out there you'll find my blog and you'll find all my freebies if you haven't grabbed my ultimate gut health reboot guide be sure to do that the link is there and I also have some tips for brain health out there for you and um, I think some recipes for um, gut friendly recipes so um, don't forget to check out my website and check out this blog post uh, and we are going to get started and like I said, this is my third episode, so, so I'm still learning a lot about um, the mechanics of doing all this. And I would really appreciate some feedback. I'd like to know if I'm hitting the mark uh, with things that you, you are finding valuable that you need to know. If you haven't seen my gut health and my brain health uh, episodes, please check those out. They're very important. They're critical foundation for us in our lives and in the lives of our families. So be sure to check those out and grab the free guides out there. Um, okay, so first of all, um, I'm doing this subject mainly because it's something that came up with me and I've had several people talk to me about it and I wanted to delve deeper and I thought you may want to know more too. This is about intermittent fasting. Um, I had an extended illness last year and I had a lot of leftover side effects uh, after I was um, back on my feet again and um, I was seeing a pulmonologist at a very prominent uh, respiratory hospital and he recommended, I, I expressed my frustration about now I'm down and out again and how am I ever going to lose this weight if I can't do anything and how difficult it's been for me and he recommended the book The Obesity Code by Jason Fung and he recommended intermittent fasting. So um, I went and got the book right away, devoured it. I found the book really interesting and I, I recommend it for reading if you want to read about about fasting and the effects on the body, uh, the things that uh, Mr. Fung states in the book, um, some interesting points. So I, I do recommend that you read it. Um, I Like I said, I devoured the book. I jumped into the fasting. It wasn't hard for me, but my results were not great. Uh, let me tell you why. Um, many people have had good results with intermittent fasting. It just happens that I did not. Uh, the fasting for me was not hard. I wasn't hungry, um, but it was hard to take some of my medications that I was required un until noon, and it threw me off schedule, which impacted other things in my body, um, so that made it a little hard. And then a lot of the times I wasn't hungry. Once you pass the point of being hungry and then you're not hungry again, you just don't eat. And... Um, I have found in the past that that has hurt me more than helped me uh, Sorry, the not eating. Could you say that again? Sorry, my Apple Watch went off. The not eating part, um, it slows your metabolism down. It, your body isn't getting the nutrients it needs to repair itself. It takes longer to get over sicknesses, which I did not need right then. So um, skipping meals was, was not good for me. Um, as a result of my illness, uh, we are with uh, the military TRICARE system. They assigned me a case manager to help me um, get appointments that I needed and get any tools that I needed um, for my recovery, and they recommended a nutritionist. And I was like, yes, please. And I was mostly hoping the nutritionist could help me mentally wrap my head around not being able to taste food, um, but yet still wanting to eat and to be healthy um, because it was really playing with my mind and all I could taste was the sensation of salt and sweet. 
um, couldn't tell what it was. So if I ate a piece of chocolate, like a Hershey's Kiss, it was smooth, it was rich, it was sugary, but I couldn't quite tell it was chocolate. Um, so it kind of makes you not really care what you're eating and be frustrated because sometimes you would eat everything just to taste something. So I really needed some mental boosting. Um, so I was really excited to talk to her about my intermittent fasting journey and what, what was I maybe doing wrong because it wasn't working out so well. And lo and behold, she was not happy with it either. Uh, she does not recommend inter intermittent fasting. She gave me a lot, a lot, couple of the same reasons that I had already discovered. Um, and she didn't really like my low-cal, low-carb approach to what I did choose to eat. Um, so uh, I asked her, why do a lot of people have success at intermittent fasting then? And she said, basically, it's just the calorie deficit. You know, you're cutting out a meal, um, and for the most part, people are cutting back on calories. If they're actually tracking them, you will see that most people cut out on calories. And some people actually fast for two meals a day and only eat one. So um, a lot of the weight loss um, benefit is coming from a calorie deficit. Uh, and then others like me slow their metabolism too much and just kind of don't eat. And then some double up on their eating because they're able to eat during this time. And they'll eat anything and everything, not really watching what they're eating. Um, junk in is junk in no matter what time of the day you eat it. Um, so that's some things to think about. And so it, I went on in this journey to, um, after talking to a couple people that were interested in understanding more about it, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to look into this a little bit more. So that's what I've done, and I hope that my information here will be um, helpful for you. And I have listed a bunch of resources and references at the end of um, this video for you. You can uh go read them yourself, draw your own conclusions, um, but I kind of gathered them in one place. Uh, and these touch on the subjects I'm going to touch on about intermittent fasting today in this video. So be sure to check out my references. And in my resources, I have a couple products um, that are helping me in uh, my journey and helping to uh, they're, they're all natural and they duplicate some of the benefits uh, possibly that fasting could give you. Um, but they're just helpful to me. They're all natural, so they give me a little bit of a boost in my health and wellness journey. So you can check those out too if you would like, and they're in the resources section uh, on my blog. So that being said, let's zero in on exactly what intermittent fasting really is. Um, you may heard of, have heard about time-restricted eating also. The difference between these two is time-restricted eating focuses on your eating window. Uh, intermittent fasting, of course, focuses on your fasting window. So um, that's the big difference between the two. And these hours for eating and fasting can vary um, from hours to days. Intermittent fasting has about as many variances as ours in the day. So we're going to talk about the top three uh, methods right now for intermittent fasting that people are doing. The first is the 5-2 diet. And that consists of eating normally five days a week and fasting two days a week on non-consecutive days. So um, that's five, to, 5 and 2 and that is very popular. Um, then there's the alternate day fasting, which alternates one day of fasting with one day of eating normal. So, um, so that's that. And then the third one is um, the most popular. It's the timing method. That is the one that most of us think of when we think about intermittent fasting. And that's where the win eating window varies from 4 to 12 hours. And then the remainder of 12 to 20 hours is your fasting window. It usually, excuse me, <coughs> encompasses your nightly sleep, which adds a good chunk to your fasting time. And it is the most popular time-restricted eating regimen is the um, 16 hours of fasting and the 8 hour of eating window. So 16 and 8. Um, so that's the one that most people uh, tend to, to 
lean toward. Um, when I was doing it, I was doing 14 hours. It was simple for me. Um, 16 wasn't much of a stretch. Um, some people may have difficulty doing this, so you have to find what feels right for your body. Um, there are lots of different other options and types of eating out there that you can um, try and uh, try to adapt to your lifestyle and see which one kind of works best for you. And those are in my blog and you can go read about them there. And like I said, um, catch my blog on my Facebook page, uh, KarenCZink.com, and that's all one word. Okay, fasting. Why? You know, we know it's been around forever. It's mentioned in the Bible at least 109, 110 times. So why this fairly new trend of intermittent fasting? Well, it became popular in 2012 when the BBC put on a documentary called Eat, Fast, and Live Longer. And in it, people saw that they didn't have to change what they ate, just when they ate. In addition to this documentary, there is some uh, research that has been done on our circadian rhythms and our uh, effects of food timing on our, our rhythms in our body, and this is called chrononutrition. And I had not heard of that before in that context. Um, and we all know circadian rhythm, it's um, usually perceived as our sleep-wake cycle. It's a 24-hour period where we go through physical, mental, and behavior changes uh, that happen at certain hours of the day or certain times of the day in our bodies. Um, however, there's a recent discovery that each of our organs has its own clock in it. Um, and it has raised the question of whether adopting a different type of window of eating, whether it be shorter or longer, has affected these clocks and if we could improve our health by adjusting our timing window on our eating. Um, we, of course, eat over a longer period than people used to. Uh, we'll eat early in the morning, we'll eat late at night, you know, and everything in between uh, because of our, our lifestyles. Um, so what we have found is, is we're also very erratic in our eating patterns as Americans. So these two things, the longer eating period and the erratic eating, have messed with our clocks in our organs. And um, by balancing our timing, optimizing our feeding times with our circadian rhythms and the clocks you know, in our organs getting set properly and being fed properly, that um, this would increase uh, or decrease the metabolic syndrome uh, likeliness uh, in our bodies. So they feel that by, researchers feel that by reducing our eating window, we have a better chance of having a more healthy uh, metabolic system, metabolic structure, and organs, and that this would um, decrease uh, metabolic syndromes such as obesity, hypertension, insulin resistance, inflammation, high cholesterol, which of course leads to cardiovascular, dis cardiovascular disease, cancers, and of course type 2 diabetes. So um, according to the New England Journal of Medicine, intermittent fasting helps um, trigger an adaptive cellular response within our bodies that are integrated between and within our organs that promote glucose regulation, increases stress resistance, and reduces inflammation. All these are great things for our bodies and our health. So, who's a good candidate for intermittent fasting? Uh, people that struggle to lose weight that have maybe not had success trying anything else uh, would be a good candidate. People that are busy, that don't have time to eat at a certain time of day, maybe that's the, day, the time they fast. Um, and anyone else um, that is healthy, otherwise healthy, and wants to improve, um, possibly improve some of their, their health. Um, other than the people I'm gonna mention now are who are the people who should not participate in intermittent fasting. Uh, people with eating disorders, people that have trouble gaining weight, people that are underweight. Uh, if you have sleep disorders, don't do it. it. It 
might mess with your sleep. If you're trying to uh, train for a marathon or intensely train to um, build a lot of muscle, this is not a good plan for you. If you have digestive issues, this is not good for you. If you have diabetes or are pregnant or breastfeeding, and if you're on medication that requires food, for example, like what happened to me is I threw all my medications off by trying to intermittent fast. Um, so that is the people that should and should not uh, be able to um, do well on intermittent fasting. Now, when I mention who intermittent fasting may be for or not for, this isn't meant to be, uh, um, I'm not a doctor, I'm not providing medical advice. It's something for you to learn more about and talk to your doctor about and make sure it's something that's right for you and whatever your um, health concern is. So um, please don't forget that step to talk to your doctor. And um, But I just am trying to give you some information so that you come from a position of knowledge uh, so that you can understand what they're saying and they can kind of um, know what you're you're trying to get out of what the objective of the conversation is so just some starting talking points for you so please don't take this as medical advice um so we're going to talk about some of the benefits of uh suspected benefits of intermittent fasting and the reason i say suspected is there's not a, uh, any uh, big uh, reviewed human studies out there most of the information about intermittent fasting out there has come from rodent studies and uh, mice and ewes. Um, not a huge amount on humans, and if there are any on humans, they're unreviewed, uh, they're small, um, and not, not verified and confirmed um, in, a, in a way with several different studies and in the right environment and all of that. So you kind of have to, when you see things that said intermittent fasting does this, well, it might do that. We don't really know. So just keep in mind that a lot of the world is selling it as these things are, are kind of a given when they're not at all. They're not at all. Um, are there benefits to it that are probably obvious? Yes. But do we know necessarily uh, exactly? No, we don't. So just keep that in mind. That's why I'm going to use words like possible, may, suspected, um, potentially, that kind of thing. Okay, so it may, intermittent fasting may possibly reduce insulin resistance and improve your blood sugar. Uh, controls which will lead to a lower A1C. Uh, potentially improved cholesterol levels. Uh, may, re may reduce inflammation. May help prevent breast cancer. And I'm going to talk about that connection here in a minute. May protect against neurodegenerative diseases. So it helps with aging and longevity. Uh, may extend your lifespan. May boost metabolism aiding in fat loss. So those are all potential benefits that researchers think that intermittent fasting may provide um, based on the animal studies that have been done so far. Um, what are some of the downsides to intermittent fasting? Uh, some people are more likely to binge, as I said earlier, irritability, low energy, headaches, constipation, persistent hunger, temperature sensitivity. You, you will tend to feel cold maybe a little more or not be able to counteract uh, heat as well as normal. Uh, you might have poor work or poor activity performance, say at the gym or, or uh, playing a sport, you know, something you're used to doing. You might just notice you're a little less, have a little less energy going. Um, there can also be sleeplessness, lightheadedness, and dehydration. Um, there are also studies exploring whether the additional stress that fasting puts on our bodies uh, causes a spike in cortisol, which is the stress hormone, which will mess with our hormones and cause a, another whole host of issues. So that is uh, an interesting question. I have left the hormone discussion out of this because I may end up doing a segment just on the hormonal effects of intermittent fasting um, because it's kind of, there's a lot of stuff going on with it. There are small scale studies um, with it that may be beneficial to know about. 
Um, but for now, I'm just uh, going to stick with uh, the, the, the question mark of how, how is it going to affect our hormones and does it stress the body enough to cause the cortisol to spike. So uh, just a second, a quick second on the breast cancer connection that I mentioned. Uh, most are rodent studies, as I've said, but I found one smaller study on women that had early stage breast cancer between the ages of 27 and 70, none of them had diabetes. Um, and there were 2,413 women in the study, and the women that fasted for less than 13 hours had a higher incidence of breast cancer recurrence. The women that fasted over 13 hours a day, they had less of a chance of recurrence. And then they found, researchers found that each two hour period that you extended your fast, lowered your A1C, and provided better sleep for uh, the women that were in that part of the study. They also found the glucose levels uh, were uh, regulated better, leading to the lower A1C, and the sleep, better sleep at night um, may have contributed to the fact, uh, those things may have contributed to the fact that the breast cancer did not reoccur in the same rates as the women, you know, that had the less than 13 hours. And there was no increased risk of death in either of the, either of the populations uh, for breast cancer or any other uh, death measures. So um, anyway, that was kind of interesting. I look forward to more research in that area and uh, maybe I'll get to do an update um, at some point and say, you know, they, this is something that can help breast cancer. And um, that's great because it gives non-pharmacological -pharma solutions to a problem uh, that, that may benefit millions of women. So that's very exciting. I don't know much more about it. Um, like I said, no big undertaking studies, no long-term studies done yet. But the rodents look promising, and this short-term study with women, uh, a limited study, uh, looks somewhat promising, at least enough to research further. So um, I found that to be really interesting. Okay, one of the big selling points on intermittent fasting is this supposed metabolic switch that occurs. There's a growing body of research that indicates that ketones are the preferred fuel for the brain and body during periods of fasting and extended exercise. Glucose and fatty acids are the main sources for our cells, but after meals, glucose is used for energy and fat is stored in our adipose tissue as triglycerides. During periods of fasting, the triglycerides are broken down to fatty acids and glycerol, which are used for energy. The liver converts the fatted fatty acids to ketone bodies or ketones, which provide a major source of energy for many tissues, including the brain, during fasting. But ketones are not just fuel during periods of fasting. They are also strong uh, signaling molecules that um, have major effects on our cells and our organs. Uh, and how they function. The ketones regulate the activity of many of the proteins and molecules that are known to influence our health and our aging. So this is one of the reasons why it is thought that intermittent fasting may actually provide more protection against aging than the standard um, eating schedule. Again, uh, waiting, uh, you know, studies on this, it's just information that's kind of uh, thought out there right now based upon um, current research. Most of the benefits I have mentioned here about intermittent fasting are all the benefits of calorie counting too, calorie restricting diet, except for the few things that I highlighted that seemed kind of special about intermittent fasting. Um, many of the beneficial metabolic and health effects of intermittent fasting may be driven by reductions in weight or body fat. So it's not always clear whether these benefits are coming from the timing of the meals, the amount of calories uh, from the meals, or the fact that people have lost weight um, 
and body fat. So it's hard to tell between uh, the two the cause and effect. However, studies on mice have indicated the health improvements uh, from intermittent fasting may not just be due to the weight loss, but due to the timing of our feeding. But again, no human studies to correlate that yet, um, but something to look forward to in the future. Um, so basically, listen to your body. Don't go to extremes that stress your body even more because you don't want to spike your cortisol. You don't want to get sick. You don't want to burden your immune system, screw up your gut, health, all of that, those things that can happen when you're under stress. Don't go more than 12 to 13 hours without eating to protect your hormone health for the first few months. Okay, make sure you're feeling good doing that. If, you, if that's fine and you want to extend to 16 hours, go ahead and um, give that a try if your doctor says it's okay. And I would uh, monitor how you feel by keeping a food journal so that if you know if you have any warning signs popping up, any side effects, that you can um, readjust your schedule as needed so that it's not detrimental to your health. Uh, you certainly don't want a setback. So what does the medical community say about intermittent fasting? A 2021 study published in the Journal of American, the American Medical Association found that only six out of 104 alleged health benefits of intermittent fasting were supported by moderate to high quality evidence, and that most findings were based on low quality research. In other words, like I've been telling you, we're not really sure about the benefits of intermittent fasting in human beings. Um, so that's an important uh, thing to remember. And um, it's an important uh, part of this whole puzzle that is worth um, exploring and maybe checking out some of the studies. There are some really positive studies coming out um, at the beginning stages of possibly helping with multiple sclerosis and as you heard uh, possible uh, positives with breast cancer reoccurrences so um, there are uh, important things to find out about intermittent fasting for the future so I hope you all have learned something again go to my website www.karenczink.com and check out the blog. It's going to have more information in it than I presented here. And it's going to have all the references linked. And don't forget to grab my freebies that are there on that page also. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.